O Holy One, be gracious to us and bless us. Let your face shine among us, so that your way may be known in the world, your saving help among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Indeed, let all peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge with truth and justice and guide the nations of the world. Let the peoples praise you, Holy One. Indeed, let all peoples praise you. May the earth yield its harvest. May the Holy One, our God, bless us. May God bless us and all the ends of the earth revere the Holy One. Psalm 67. Good day, my friends in Christ. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 20th of June. Let's begin with a deep breath as we offer ourselves to God in worship. O God, let our mouth proclaim your praise together and your glory all the day long. Christ has shown forth his glory together. O come, let us worship. Glory to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, together, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 83 is a prayer for God's deliverance, a prayer for God's judgment against the enemies of the people of God. A psalm like this invites us to ponder what are the enemies of the people of God? Are they human beings or are they attitudes, values, twisted beliefs? I'd like us to move our thinking away from people as the problem, but of spiritual forces, of error, of lies, hatred of God, and other vices which truly are the enemies of the people of God. We must also list here anti-Semitism. And it is true that anti-Semitism is often worked through people. Psalm 83 verses 1 to 5 and 13 to 18. O God, do not be silent. Do not keep still nor hold your peace, O God, for your enemies are in tumult. And those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They take secret counsel against your people and plot against those whom you protect. They have said, Come, let us wipe them out from among the nations. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. They have conspired together. They have made an allegiance against you. O oh my God, make them like whirling dust, like chaff before the wind like fire that burns down a forest, like the flame that sets mountains ablaze. Drive them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, O Lord, that they may seek your name. Let them be disgraced and terrified forever. Let them be put to confusion and perish. Let them know that you, whose name is Yahweh, you alone are the most high over all the earth. Let us pray. Lord, dispel from us the terror of pride and the illusions of greatness, and help us to abandon every vice and stand in awe of you, for you alone are the Most High over all the world, now and forever. Amen. Join me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now to Romans chapter 2, verses 12 to 24. Paul continues to teach us about the relationship of human beings to God and the law. When he speaks of those who are apart from the law, he refers to Gentiles, just like under the law refers to the Jews. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. All who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, these, though not having the law, are a law to themselves. They show that what the law requires is written on their hearts, to which their own conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse, or perhaps excuse them, on the day when, according to my gospel, 
God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. But if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast of your relation to God and know his will and determine what is best because you are instructed in the law, and if you are sure that you are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of children, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, you then that teach others, will you not teach yourself? While you preach against stealing, do you steal? You that forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? You that abhor idols, do you rob temples? You that boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? For, as it is written, the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here Paul is using a literary device. He is pretending to have a conversation with a Jew and arguing with the Jew about their own practice under the law. Tomorrow we will hear the conclusion of this imaginary conversation in verses 25 to 29. Now our response to the Romans passage. You have a part to play in this. I'll ask you to repeat with me. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Please join me. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned together. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You are precious in my sight, and I love you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Together, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. That beautiful responsory is built on Isaiah chapter 43. Such a wonderful reminder. God knows us by name and claims us in love. You truly are beloved of God. Thanks be to God. Now together, let's affirm our belief in this God of love through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, my friends, to our litany of prayers, please respond to the bidding, giver of breath with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Creator of the heavens, lead all peoples into a common life of justice, faith, peace, and love. Giver of breath, together, hear our prayer. Inspire the king, the governor general, the prime minister, and all in authority to serve the people of this country according to your holy will. Giver of breath, together, hear our prayer. Guide the growth and development of all children and young people. We especially pray for the young people of St. Philip's, grateful for their ministry of the church through drama. Bless our musical theater camp. Bless Carlin, Joanna, Catherine, Aidan, myself, and all our volunteers. Give her a breath. Hear our prayer. Deliver and keep the sick in your love. Here you may want to pause the recording and pray for those who are on your hearts this day. We pray for Ray, for Wendy, for Karen, for Richard, Ricardo, Rose, Gabe, Joe, Anthony, 
Keith, Brad, Jackie, and her newborn daughter, giver of breath, together, hear our prayer. Support and keep steadfast all who for the sake of justice and truth have been condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor. Giver of breath, together, hear our prayer. Direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice as shown by the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have borne witness to the gospel. Giver of life, together, hear our prayer. Creator of the universe, the light of your glory shines in the darkness of our lives. Make us attentive to your presence, prompt to serve you and ever eager to follow in the steps of the one who is our true light, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord together. Thanks be to God. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of the Holy Spirit, with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the same Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.